Um, it's James again. It's about six degrees outside. I think the wind chill is negative 16 currently in Ohio, so it's pretty crazy. I got the torpedo heater going right now. I did buy a new truck. No, it's not Duramax, and it's a V6, so uh, I know I'm going to be getting a lot of hate, but um, I love it. Um, I do miss my Duramax. But one thing I always wanted to do for my Duramax was put a little air compressor on there and I could never really find a spot because I never wanted to put a toolbox on there. But um, this truck, I got a little toolbox. I had like the smallest one I could buy off of Craigslist. And um, yeah, we're gonna mount up the compressor. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. I'm gonna try and do it the most uh, clean and effective way. Factory looking, you know no issues down the line if I wanted to upgrade the compressor because it is a real cheap compressor like I was saying I think I got it for like 90 bucks on eBay with the air horn so but yeah this is the compressor right now all I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna mount it to a piece of wood so it's not like rolling around in there ideally even the uh, the mounts were off a little bit so I was only gonna put two of them in I got quarter 20s in there right now with a, uh, I think inch and a quarter, quarter 20s with a washer and a lock washer. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my uh, impact with my swivel socket. You can do it with a regular wrench, but um, what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and sink that, uh, make that flush with the wood. Once it grabs, I'm just gonna impact it all the way up. I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking right, about. So I'm gonna. I don't really care too much about this tank or else I wouldn't use this impact socket on it because it's going to scratch a little bit. All I'm going to do is put a quarter 20 on there, 716, and kind of just... See how it kind of just sucked right in there. Made it nice and uh, flush, so... I like it because it'll sit in the bottom of the box and won't be wobbling around like that. So I'm just going to do that to the other side then see what we're going to do about putting it in the box. Alright, so all I'm uh, going to do is I'm going to set it right in there, kind of see how it fits. What I did is I drilled a hole right there straight down through my box. So it'll go through, I'm going to grab another quarter 20, stick it down in there. I love the quarter 20s with the, <clears throat> they just sink right into the wood because I mean it just makes it so convenient. I'm going to throw a nut and a lock washer on the underneath. Kind of hard to see. I'm going to get that on and I'm going to throw the impact on it. Throw the impact on there. It's nice having those lights on the drill. Almost do this one-handed. Um, now the compressor is mounted. I'm actually going to throw another screw in on the other side, but um, it'll keep it from kind of sliding around, and uh, it won't flip now. Now I can kind of mount whatever I want here. First aid kit, my panel hitch, some toe straps, uh, two-inch wall, hammer, jumpers. Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna go power down. I'm gonna put the fuse up front before I put the relay in for the switch and all that. But um, I'm gonna have to uh, drill through the bed some somewhere. Not really sure where yet. Um, so the next thing I did was uh, I'm gonna locate some power, a power source I can tap into. So here's my battery. I understand it's a little different looking than a lot of the older vehicles, but um, it's basically the same thing. Got your high, got your negative. Negative goes to the ground of the entire chassis. And then I kind of got all these like <clears throat> uh, posts I can tap into. I would like to tap into the blank one, but I did not have an extra nut on hand. I will get one and I will move this over. All I did is I, I wanted to run 10 gauge wire in case uh, at later time I wanted to bump up the compressor size just because, you know, I don't want to have to rerun all, rerun all the wires per se. So for now, we're just going to go with 10 gauge. 
It's rated for 30 amps, and I put a 25 amp fuse in here. I know sometimes it's hard to see. I put one of those inline fuses. I'm actually gonna change that out for a one with the weather strip on it. And basically I ran this, I ran an extra wire, so at a later time if I wanted to run another hot for <clears throat> something else, I can just easily tap into that. Cause it's not easy to tap into the fuse panel on these. They're mini fuses unless you, I just didn't have them on hand. So I did it the long way. I'm just got the wire uh, stripping off for right now, but uh, I'm gonna obviously clean this up and mount it all the way up here. But on, on this particular truck, it has a boot right there, which I was very luckily able to run. So this is for the functionality test. Um, I'm just gonna do a review of everything I did on this real quick, just to wrap it up. If you have any questions, please ask me. This is on my compressor. It's a 2015 uh, Chevy 1500 V6. It'll work on any vehicle, really. I mean, just the variations are gonna be a little bit different. So what I did was, this is my battery. I know it looks a little funky. It's got all this plastic on it, but same, negative hot, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, you can take it from the negative here and the hot here if you wanna run them all the way back. But all I did was I took the hot from under here, a post, ran an inline fuse, labeled a compressor, wrapped it in tape so it kind of waterproofed it. I ran an, actually two wires, two 10 gauge wires through this wire loom. This is just a, one tucked away blank, not using it right now, just in case I want to add something else, another accessory in the back, up to 30 amps. Um, those are my uh, connections, all heat shrunk, nicely done. I'm gonna end up taping that up. Got a ran and wire loom zip tied up out of the way here. Took it right into my, uh, my boot, my weather proof boot, poked through there with the screwdriver, stuck the wires in. I'll show you where they come out. What I did is I stole a ground from right here from the chassis, made sure it was a good ground with my meter. Um, stole a ground, branched it off into two wires using a splitter. So I have an extra ground over my switches. I'm actually gonna turn on my compressor real quick. Fully functional. We'll let it build up some air real quick while I show you guys. Uh, those are the two wires I brought in. I got them in wire loom over here. I'm gonna protect them in the back. Make sure, make sure they're out of the way of the pedals. Nothing over, nothing under, behind that would prevent you from stopping or accelerating the car. Tuck it up, zip tie it, do whatever you have to do. Make sure. It's not in the way, that's a big safety issue. Um, what I did is I ran them over this heater vent in this uh, wire loom right there, that's mine. <clears throat> to this switch. So I ran, this is my extra ground. I'm definitely gonna clean this up a little bit. This is just a momentary switch for the horns himself. This is the power hot. I'm sharing that with the hot for the momentary switch. This is the <clears throat> hot going to the compressor, and this is just the ground. So that builds up to 125 PSI, and the compressor automatically shuts off. When it goes below 100, it turns back on. This is my on-off switch for that. I'm gonna run when the truck's off, no key in it, just the way I wanted it. You can run it for a key hot, you just need to tap into the fuse panel. I did not. This is my momentary switch. So uh, that activates the horns. So I have my uh, horn activation wire, which is red, and the power to the compressor, which is black, running under the dash to the passenger side. I shut the compressor off. Um, didn't want to kill the battery while it's dead. I mean, while it's uh, on, but since the compressor's off and it's built up, horn will still work just got to push it in a little bit before I just picked up this momentary switch um, this wire and the hot wire run in between here yes I'm gonna put wire loom on there 
I just tucked them away right now, temporarily. They run up here. Back there, I pulled off the carpet. I ran them in the factory wire, wire harness under there. Then I picked up my ground from inside here. I have it running through here with wire loom. There, and then I use these little stickums, stick them to the uh, cab and um, put a zip tie around it, secure it, keep it from wiggling around. You don't want it riding on here, wearing through, and then causing it to short out. I did put tape on here just to weatherproof it. This is temporary. This is just so when you open the door, you know, it doesn't, it slams nice. You know, it doesn't build up pressure in here. Um, and the ventilating system. But I just ran the wires out there. Ran them to there with wire loom. You have to, have to protect it. It will rub and it will cause an issue. I got them wired to here. I wired extra slack so I could, uh, you know, pull the toolbox away if need be. Um, yes, I will bolt the toolbox down. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to clean up the wiring in here. Just wanted to get it run and um, make sure everything was good before I sealed everything up. Um, from here it was 1 8 uh, national pipe thread so I took it to a T to a uh, another 1 inch by 8 inch pipe thread to a 1 inch female 1 uh, 1 8 pipe thread and female to a quarter inch pipe thread male to the coupler hose which will fit you know any airline then you just got to get your airline to the chuck no issues um, I'm gonna be checking for leaks right now it's at uh, about 60 psi and this goes right to the air uh, the air horns themselves which are under here yes I will be uh, sealing everything up under there but all I really did was I put two bolts through there in the box I know you have to put a lot of holes in this box, but it will be all right. And I will be sealing up this hole down here to protect it from the uh, hot on the horns. But everything is fully functional and I will actually be transferring everything over to this box, which I just got a good deal on. So um, there will be a final review video, me showing you how I use it on some uh, tires and it really fills up pretty quick. I'm, I'll throw the compressor on so you guys can see or uh, hear how loud it is actually. Just gonna hit the switch. It's gonna start building up air pressure. As you can tell, it builds up pretty quick. It's pretty quiet. You know, nothing to really worry about. Um, a nice box I mean I like how low profile it is one thing it does get a little warm so you're gonna want you're gonna build something on the new box to uh, prevent that from uh, rubbing on anything make sure it doesn't you know melt or worst case scenario catch on fire but um thank you guys for watching I do really appreciate it this did take me about six hours to do total just because you know running back and forth I didn't know exactly what I needed I wasn't sure if I was gonna do the horn or um, but in total with the compressor and all the wire to do it right it's about 200 bucks and I would highly recommend it to get an air compressor functionality on, uh, on your vehicle I know you can do it nicer and run it through the box but they just had the mini super mini fuses which I couldn't find anywhere to tap into um, without it being a major issue so that's the way I did it if you have any recommendations please let me know um, any questions feel free to ask thanks for watching uh, I will definitely be doing a follow-up video so check that out thanks James